joining me in studio as you know and today we're talking about how to handle transitions and delays amidst pressure from family and benjamin is here good morning my brother hey good morning you're well i'm good today we have a very interesting topic i tell you <laughs> because we are talking about our people our people <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I, and you know the, the most interesting part is that uh, we all hope and pray that we come from families that are supportive exactly and where we hold each other up that's our wish all of us yeah but we also know in reality most of the most difficult relationships you'll ever have to deal with will be family members yeah we also know that uh, the most toxic people come disguised <laughs> <laughs> as relatives <laughs> and they use the access card of yeah. your blood yeah, yeah, yeah. to get into your life exactly uh, our wish is all over here and our reality is over here <laughs> those who overstay in the wishful thinking but I, you know, I thought because, I thought because my auntie, I thought because of my brother, I thought because, I thought because, I thought because. If you stay on the wishful side, you'll be delayed in life and you'll suffer the Jonathan uh, catastrophe, the Jonathan fate yeah. of, of dying because of a staying with a relative whom you should have outgrown. Mm-hmm. So, um, this topic uh, on how to actually still succeed despite opposition and, you know, um, a lot of bad energy from relatives is essential for everyone. Mm-hmm. If you come from that place where you have all family members are supportive, you're lucky, you're happy, make sure another family like that comes from you. Yeah. But in reality, the first family of Adam and Eve, there was strife mm-hmm. among brothers. Yeah. Because one felt like was favored by God. Mm-hmm. The other guy was favored uh, by God and, uh, more than him. So if you ask me, I would say this is an equipment, a story that you need. Everybody requires. I want to give you a few strategies mm-hmm. on how to understand strife uh, from family and how to actually progress um, I want you to repeat the topic so that you pick the words for our listeners. Yeah, our, our listeners, remember what we're talking about today is how to handle transitions and delays amidst pressure from family. I wanted them to catch that. Yeah. Transitions, mm-hmm. delays, yes. pressure, family. Yes. <laughs> okay, so transition is it's when you are, you are crossing a bridge mm-hmm. from one side to the other one. You are graduating, for example. Yeah. You are getting married, for mm-hmm. example. Mm-hmm. Getting a good job. You're, 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 you are buying a property, you're purchasing a car, you're flying abroad. You're doing something that is next level. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. Now, delays, delays mean when what you're working on has not yet materialized and there's an empty space and a, a waiting that is not, you can't explain what, when will that happen? Why, why are you not moving forward? Why are you not still married? What are you waiting for? You know, now, that period when you, you know, you are incubating, you're working on something. It's very hard to explain yeah. because you can't people can't give people dates, <laughs> but mm-hmm. you know you're in the process, mm-hmm. and you're faith. You believe in God, and you believe in the process, and you're applying yourself, but you're patient until it comes to pass. Now that period is really very disconcerting, mm-hmm. and even you, you are stretched. Sometimes you also have doubts. <laughs> the delays people also have doubts. The second, uh, the third word here is pressure. Mm-hmm. Pressure is when people are applying on you influence and they are stressing you, putting you on anxiety, you're trying to put you on the receiving end. You feel pressurized, you know. People are trying to squeeze you in towards a certain direction, you know. Oh, they trouble you so much. The way I was telling you, sometimes we minimize our trips home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a period during the delays. <laughs> you, you, you are very careful. Yeah. When you have to attend that function, that funeral, you show up, uh, you know, technically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It is registered in the books that you attended. You attended. <laughs> but socially, you're not that available. <laughs> because you know which, which questions they will start shooting. Yeah. So for me, one of the things I, 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 I think about pressure is that when you're no longer following the path they want, when you're no longer doing what they expect, you expect them to be disturbed. All right? Yeah. Now, and when you say family, we mean blood. Today we talk about the family that you could not choose. You were were born among them, Mm -hmm. all right? So let's start by saying that not all family members will be bad. Many of them are supportive. You'll have some who are supportive, but in many cases, the ones that are genuinely supportive, their support wanes and fluctuates Mm -hmm. through life. Many are very happy to see the the young Brahman, five years old, reciting verses in Sunday school. (laughs) So, (laughs) at that point, the boy is not a threat. Mm -hmm. He is only hated by the enemies of the parents who do not want to see a healthy kid Mm -hmm. coming from them. But generally, you as a person, you don't have too many enemies (laughs) when you're five years old. On to about 15 years, when you pass class 8, people start having an opinion. How come you get those marks? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you finish from 4, they start, you surprise them with the grade you got, and they had already given you another limit. Yeah. All right? 
the trouble with the family is everybody has an opinion of what what you're capable of. Mm-hmm. And what makes a lot of family members envious is because they saw you when you did nothing and they decided that's who you are. They decided that that's who you are. That's the biggest problem. People who are not family don't have an opinion of what you're supposed to be. People who are family have an opinion. <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> and to admit that they are wrong about you is too painful. And they had already de- determined how far you can go. They already, you know, um, so the first group is those people who saw you when you're very low and they fixed that to be your fate. All right? And oh, they saw your family being needy. They themselves even helped. <laughs> and they enjoyed when your family is on the receiving end. Mm-hmm. Or when they, you depended on them either financially or for advice or for insight or for things. That things you depend on them on. Mm-hmm. That would be the first group of haters. The second group of haters is the ones that now you surpass them. They might even have supported you before. Mm-hmm. But now you are buying better cars than them. You're building bigger house than them. You're, you're outshining them. You're topping them. You're ahead. And you're gaining more name and more more respectability. This can be an uncle or an auntie. Some people you never expected that you are in any form of competition. Most progressive people are not trying to compete. They're trying to actualize their potential. Mm-hmm. They're trying to do what they feel is their calling. Most people who, 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 who um, arose envy, are not aware. <laughs> They're just being themselves. <laughs> Brahma is just doing his shows. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a person who is listening, listening at it at home. Na, na, um, <laughs> they are being, they are so, they are seething. How come? How come? Why? And you, you're not thinking like that. You're just doing your job. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes they think that when you're on radio, you have a lot of millions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they associate that with other imaginary benefits. <laughs> that they see you here, <laughs> see you on these screens or they hear you on radios, that means you are very rich, rich, rich. Yeah. So one way they express their envy is you show home without a prado and they, they, they <laughs> I thought all oh, big, big people should have, you know, <laughs> big cars. Uh-huh. I thought you would come with a jet. Yeah. We hear you all over. Mm-hmm. Many of them are being, it's a kasakazim, mm-hmm. satire. They did not, they didn't think you can go that far mm-hmm. and, and, and you, you are taking your time. So the second group that will lend you is when you begin to surpass them and then to over shadow their fame and to make them not to shine not to be seen that much the third group you want to be very careful with is these people i call it vicarious enmity it's not you exactly they hate is that family mm-hmm. and what they perceived it they'd already written that family off mm-hmm. these ones are extended uh, family members who hated your nuclear family mm-hmm. they did not like the way your father married your mother they had another idea. Mm-hmm. They wanted to be married themselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or oh, there's another person they wanted to. So there's a, a history that back, family has a unique history that precedes you. <laughs> Before you were born, mm-hmm. there were some currents going on. <laughs> this third group is very dangerous because they even use witchcraft. They use a lot of workout. In Africa, a lot of people go to great lengths so that you find that there's a woman who is determined that no child from that girl who is your mother now Will, I mean, you'll never go far, and I have dict- and I have said it, <laughs> you know. Now they see a child of that girl whom they ruled out, uh, trying to make it, trying to make it. So the third group of family enmity is those people who have conflicts that preceded you. Usually it's a fight with your parents. Usually it's a fight with that older group. And you, you are here. Uh, I don't know, you remember, sometimes you used to be warned not to interact with children from a certain family. Yeah. But when you meet in school, we forget. Mm-hmm. We are just children. <laughs> <laughs> we're just having fun <laughs> and then you're being reprimanded for playing with a certain child mm-hmm. and you, you do not remember where they come from these are generational problems that you you are not private to yeah. you, we, but they are trying to transfer it to us mm-hmm. they're trying to you know uh, bring us on to that kind of conflict and you may have seen how this modern generation will meet at home and they don't even remember those special names which greetings to greet who who is not cousin who is we just call each other brosies and this person may be technically an auntie mm-hmm. to you technically a cousin to you we just call each other bro, bro because of the age group generation we just want to talk about issues that concern us how far are you with your job how far are you with school what's happening on your side how are you guys finding it we discuss what pertains us we don't want to care about your mother and my mother never got along so the third group is uh, conflicts that preceded your being born all right the last group that uh, you you'll also be very uh, careful with is when you dethrone uh, the kingpins when you dethrone a person who's carrying the family name when you when you surpass you know like you see culture there are cultures that where the first male cousin becomes like a brother to all cousins an older brother or a parent figure so to speak to all cousins now if for example you have you have that 
de facto family name and then another young obscure person who has no position is making waves <laughs> do you see they feel out and, and they, because they're supposed to advise you they are the advisor yeah technically speaking they are usually sent by the old men go and talk to that brahman go to talk to that boy show him the way mm-hmm. now they're supposed to show you the way and you're already ahead of them <laughs> <laughs> because many people get those uh, traditional clan status and those who get the positions they 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 count on them too much they relax mm. they think now it is a status of sorts out here we don't recognize your clan rankings yeah. <laughs> yeah. we want pure competency <laughs> it's okay that you come from a culture that has a way of relating but when you come here we want to see fruit so and as i told you about birth positions many of us are not uh, neither first born or last born we're just in between there you had to differentiate yourself First born had a parental authority. They could punish and yeah. guide. And they they looked very senior. The last born had a last born status. Mm. Toto, you know that the one who's been given privileges and you know. Uh, but when you're in the middle there, you have to distinguish yourself with something. <laughs> so some of us worked very hard to find some respectability because you're being taken generally. Nobody is giving you a special a special attention. Mm. Those are the mainly the, uh, the the four categories. You know, dethroning a kingpin, a person who used to be ahead, who used to be respectable, but by your by your visions, you are now beginning to make them irrelevant. Mm. All right. Mm-hmm. What is the solution? Now. The solution to family strife, the solution to how to how to endure delays, transitions and uh, in the midst of pressure from people who have uh, so to speak quote and quote a moral authority to check how you're doing. <laughs> you know, they behave like they have a duty to make sure you're growing normally. Yes. <laughs> At the right age you're getting married. At the right age you're getting child. Yeah. At the right age you're doing this. So they have milestones they have drawn somewhere mm-hmm. what everybody is supposed to do and usually comes from their own perspective. And uh, and Brahman, I think I, I I told you the other day that I'm done discussing poverty. I'm mm-hmm. done discussing backwardness. Yeah. I've just blocked somebody here before we started the show mm-hmm. because she's 28 and she's calling herself housewife. I have no conversation Prime to talk age. to a lady that young calling Prime. herself housewife. Prime age. You are calling herself housewife. Don't know married for many years. No, no married. You rush into marriage before you even build any competence. Now, because the questions that will come from there is, whenever he gives me money, I have to come to every last coin. I'm wondering now, I have problems. I'm, I'm stressed. Don't touch it. All the problems will come from that wrong direction in life. Another person told me she married at 18. <laughs> because she got pregnant. <laughs> now, why are you telling me nauseating madness? Why do you want me to comment about it? What's the comment? You, you already know that was lunacy. Yeah. Brahman, there are some of your family members who committed outrageous acts of lunacy, I mean, craziness. Yeah. And you, when you simply behave no more, when you use your common sense, <laughs> they were rushing to marriage before they were prepared financially. Mm-hmm. And then the responsibilities of marriage made them struggle many decades. Took them too long to, to, to take off. So the things they were buying midlife, you, you are buying them before you get married. Mm-hmm. Before you, because you did your mathematics. <laughs> I want to be here and marry when I'm here. This is what I'm aiming at. Now, I have come from families where outrageous, I mean, something that is so, you hear it, you catch an instant migraine. You hear a flash of headache right away. <laughs> no, at 18, what are you doing having sex? At 18, what are you doing getting pregnant? At 18, how do you get married? I mean, and now you're explaining it here, a other 18 years later, saying you have six children, no seven children, or whatever. And from then, you've been locked in the house all the time, your mind, you are not allowed to do this, or the other, or the other, or the other, or the other. What are these? And you're still having children there. Brahmins and people have chosen a trajectory of life that is very disastrous, mm-hmm. that is very painful. They are family members, they are relatives, but their thinking is so backward. Even if you, even by looking at all they have dealt with their own lives, you shiver in fear. <laughs> looking at what they have precipitated. <laughs> To their own life by the actions, Bramwell. I a conversation is impossible yeah. because everything you say is offensive to them. It's debatable. It's disagreeable. <laughs> it's you know, and, and, and Bramwell, I, I'm trying to discard. I grieve. For, I grieve in families. Many families in Africa have normalized poverty and struggling, so that when you have a bicycle, you're rich. <laughs> Unfortunately, imagine. Somebody buying a new motorcycle is something for groups of women and men to sit and discuss that new motorcycle. <laughs> where are we, Brahma? What are we talking about? You must have stolen, I don't know from where. You must have, you must have actually taken genies, you took now all cars to buy a motorbike. And you took a circle. 
You deceived slowly until you saved 50,000. They added you 40. Now you're paying a loan of 40. This motorbike is for 100,000 or 90,000. And now you have a motorbike. That is enough to cause chaos. Some even come with nails to pierce the tire, <laughs> to deflate the tire. To You know, you may come from families that are very primitive. I'm trying to describe how backward. <laughs> but I'm going to lead another discussion another forum where people are saying you should have many children. And I'm saying, you mean we are still talking like this? Look at that. We should have many children and just have many villa they are. And people are serious. They're not joking. You know, um, some, if you say something and you're joking, it can be funny. Mm -hmm. But if you say it when you're serious, yes, yes. It's, now it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of poverty-inspired ideas. Yeah. Our backwardness that has infiltrated our DNA until as we talk, it looks normal. Mm -hmm. Brahma, many of the battles you're going to fight from family members are backward and primitive. I want to give you strategy. The first strategy to deal with things that are not worthy responding to. Somebody asking you how come you bought a car before you built your, your mother a story building, a gorofa. <laughs> <laughs> how come? <laughs> they have many things. They believe that you should supposed to put other people. They are coming from their own thinking. Mm. Always ask yourself those who are advising you. The advice they are giving you, how far has it taken them? That is not truthfulness, that is reality. That is reality. Be too. rational. <laughs> Be rational. Before a person attempts, because they, they become advisors quickly when they see you succeeding. Yes. And they act like they have always rooted for you. Because <laughs> they want some handouts. They want to be on the good side with you. Mm. They want to be your agents for your projects at home mm. so that they can find some cuts. They even forget they are older than you. <laughs> no, they treat you like the boss. <laughs> <laughs> so they can leverage and make some cuts and handouts. Mm. There are those, and others want to act like. Now you are following uh, their, their path and now they will coach you about success. I can see you now, you are dreaming, you are dreaming, you are dreaming. Mm -hmm. And Prama, uh, I told you the other day that one of the biggest determiners is when you begin to get married. But I will come to that. Those people who are, who are asking you primitive questions, learn to fight the national battle, not the family battle. Mm -hmm. uh, when David went to fight Goliath, he had a very ugly confrontation with his own brothers. Yeah. He went there. <laughs> <laughs> to take lunch, to take the lunch to them. And when he saw a battle, he took up the challenge. Now, he had to, another enemy to deal before dealing with the real enemy. Mm -hmm. Before confronting Kolya, he confronts his own family. His, his own brother. Who are calling him, I know how proud you are. You left to, you know, came here to watch the battle. You left those few sheep. Be careful with that sarcasm and criticism with people who look down upon you because you are younger than them. Mm -hmm. Now, they were here defeated by, 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 scared, so afraid, you know, of, of, of Goliath. And David is confronting him. Now, David was referring back to how he fought foxes yeah. when he was, uh, you know, and he was referring to his faith and to his God. But these guys had been intimidated. They were just doing trash talking, answering each other, answering each other, you know, noise, noise. And David wanted to attempt and represent God. He said, if you have insulted the armies of my God, he will help me. He will stand with me. He will give me the power to punish you so that we, the name of God is not ashamed. And Brahma, there's a, there's a prayer secret there. Sometimes when you see people who are speaking blasphemy or disrespecting God, there is a ready opportunity there to kill a God. Yes. Yeah. To protect the name of God. God is very jealous about his name. He says he, had, he has exalted his promises even above his name. Mm -hmm. God is all selfless. What he promises you, what he tells you you will do, he will respect it even more than his own reputation. Mm -hmm. But the name of God, when you take it out there, you also not carrying his reputation. Saying, because you have attempted to despise my faith, my Christianity, you have attempted to say that I will not make it although I am quoting my God. I will kill God, this Goliath. I will do this big achievement to prove to the world that God is there. Bramwell, at that moment, you can actually sail on that wave. Yeah. That's how David did it. David did not approach Goliath slowly because I thought, he thought if he walked slowly, he will, he will concentrate on the bigness of the giant mm -hmm. and get scared. He ran. <laughs> he ran towards the giant. Sometimes when challenges are posed and you are they're in front of you and, and you're trusting God, you need to run. <laughs> run towards it. <laughs> you know? And he just, he only needed to throw one stone. Mm -hmm. The battle of David with his brothers tells you that before you kill God, Goliath, before you become a mega business person, before you become a sensation, you will have to, a, a, a nasty confrontation with your own family. Mm -hmm. And I want you to do what David did. David, you know, he went by, he, he passed by the side. He did not focus on it. He asked them now, what have I done to you? He went on to another person. 
what will be done if a person kisses? The brothers try to throw words at him. Now, what's wrong? Me, I'm not uh, into you, my friend. Learn this. Those brothers, those sisters, those cousins, those aunties, those cousins, those people who come from family and they feel like they have an authority to return you to your senses. Whenever they raise their objections, don't engage. Do what David did. Move on. Move on to the right conversation. Go talk to other strangers. Go talk to other people. And still confront the, the, the giant. Mm-hmm. So the first solution to family nasty battles is fight the national battle. David had come here to fight for Israel. But this guy is bringing family battles in. Uh, the, 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 the quick, the solution and the, the trick is that once you win the national respect, the family battles, you win them automatically. Mm-hmm. Your status is automatically changed. Even at home now, they knew who can go to the king, who is known, more known now. Yeah. Who is reputable? The funny thing is those guys are counted by names there when, when there was an anointing ceremony. And they're just being counted and the horn is not flowing. Sometimes the horn is pointing at a person who would not have been. Even the father had not presented the boy. Mm-hmm. He thought these others are more qualified. These ones are older. They look more well built. They are more put together for this. And sometimes when your own parents or some, they, they will not expect you to reach certain levels. Fight the national battles. Look at your gro- global calling. Look at the people you're supposed to influence. Look at the scale you undertake your career. Pray and focus your mind there. And remember to carry the reputation of God with you. Always stage your career and your, your fights to represent God and his reputation and his name. You will always win. God is very keen on protecting his name. God is very keen. I told you about phenomenon in boxing where some people become proud when they have been winning. Yeah. And they try to blaspheme God. Every time they blaspheme God, they go down. Mm-hmm. And they never learn the lesson. They lose, they lose, they lose their panic. God he may not be involved in sports. He may not be directly there in football to make sure this club wins or this boxer wins over the other. These are affairs of entertainment among men. And God may not always interfere. Except if a child of his is asking for a win in a certain respect. Now God can help his child. But even if you're not a child of God, you don't know God, but you try to disrespect him, he cares about his reputation and he will punish you instantly. There was one Herod who, who sat and they were singing to him that he is not human, he is superhuman. And he died and wrote, the same time, worms ate him up. The same at in an instant. God is very careful with his reputation. And I've learned to sense where he wants representation because he is so powerful, he can kill Goliath with a stone. <laughs> if there is a daily who is courageous. God has ordered the nature of life. He can do things on his own. Many times the Israelites went to battle. Even before they reached there, God will rain stones on the enemies. Before they arrived there. But many times God wants to partner with you. There are many things he will do on his own without you. Other things he wants to partner with you. You take the slings and run courageously towards Goliath in faith and trusting him and you will never fail. So the first solution is don't fight the local battle, fight the national battle. Look at the larger scale of what you wanted to achieve and aim at it with all your energy. Build that career, become that lawyer, build that business, you know, interact, become that media person, build your auditing firm, build that, I mean, do that thing, start that school, anyhow. They will hear the story and ask you questions. Always move, avoid it uh, technically, like David did. Avoid engaging. Make it as brief as possible. People who come to buy, who come to say, yeah, 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 that's our child, that's our girl. We always knew her potential. When the world is celebrating you, when people start singing new songs, your family is given status now. Because, ah, this is the family of the Brahman. Oh, this is the family of David. Ah, you guys tell us how this guy grew up. Now you are being interviewed for biographies. <laughs> you know? <laughs> When we see a person who is successful, suddenly now we're being shown their sister, their mm-hmm. brother. Mm-hmm. People we never knew. And you may think they have always been for this person. They, they may, many of them, some may have been supportive. But many others usually are very envious. They change their mind when the world comes looking for them mm-hmm. because of the fame of this other person. The second solution. Uh, we have said the first solution is just focus on the bigger battle. Mm-hmm. And once you win nationally, even locally, your status changes. You are no longer just a middle obscure child. You are King David now. <laughs> Jesse and the family, they are, they are given status. You are Joseph now. You save the whole family. They hated the way you used to dream and they even sold you to slavery for it. And they don't like the way you are predicting bad future for them and a good future for you. And they sell you. Eventually, you end up saving the whole family. And look at the global. Look at the global. And he told them, am I in the place of God? I don't want to punish you. God created me for this and he called me to come and save me many lives in as you see today yeah i have no interest punishing you i just want you to know that god ordained me to go ahead of the way so that you can be saved 
Now, the second thing primal is to redefine family. All right. Mm -hmm. The second solution is to stop defining family as blood. I want you to define family as destiny. I want you to know that you can have family who are not blood. Because if your family is not a, is, is against you, you may feel alone in the world. Because if my own people don't support me now, um, can I even make it? Who can I lean on? Redefine family to include those people who come to your life who genuinely care about you. Or you may not be family. This can be a friend, a spouse, a person who is genuinely for you. I want you to redefine family to include inner circle people who genuinely care for you and get emotional support from them so that you don't feel alone and discouraged and then you lose your strength, all right? Mm -hmm. David found another friend, another family in Jonathan. Yeah. They used to confide in each other, they used to encourage each other. He found other mighty men, uh, people like Joab, Abishai, Asahel. He found very good men who could win, fight for him, even Abna. Abna later on changed from Saul's side to David's side. But when he was changing, another envious guy killed him. You will have a lot of family, so to speak, that are coming from bond. And you might have noticed that even when you do your events, one thing I noticed in these uh, birthday parties is that they help you. For once, they give a they they, they 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 give you a chance to hear feedback on how you're affecting people's lives, mm -hmm. and you get to see people putting effort to express, you know, gratitude to how you've done their yeah. friendship, celebrate their friendship, you know, and it it gives you a chance for to be on this other side. Mm -hmm. When you are an achieving person, when you are a driven person, you are likely to be mono directional, and you're just the one doing, 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 doing. And if you just go that, it may go too long, then you get burned out, or you may even become discouraged, whether you really matter. Sometimes we forget, and you just want to be tough and strong, and tough and going and going. And I say, it, many who are like me who do not see the need of people doing parties for them. When your friends want to do it, it's also a sign of love to let them. Mm -hmm. Just let them. And so that you can hear from this other end. What are you doing right and what should you know, do more? Because it, it, you may not have another special day. Graduations come once in a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are not always studying and graduating. Which other events then? A wedding is only one. <laughs> Which other event that people can focus on you? If your friends want to do something for you, allow it and let it happen. And learn that in many cases, um, the friends God has brought in your life are not always, these are the family now. They may not always be the family from home. Sometimes you have an event and it's only one or two real family members who are here. Mm -hmm. The others are family members who you are not blood, but you have a lot of chemistry, yeah. you have destiny, you bond. Redefine family to mean those people who genuinely want the best for you, who root out for you, who look out for you, who, 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 who you know, who champion your cause and who want to move, who want to see you move redefine family to include those people you can trust even with your back turned mm -hmm. there are many people you can trust them but when you're out you're not sure what they will say yeah. uh, there are people who and we're not saying you're trusting everyone now these are usually just a handful of people they are never like 10 or so no you don't have time for that you can't build closeness with a lot of people closeness builds it's built over time and time time is limited so if you are an ordinary i mean a person who is busy on average, you, or every day you have a job. Every day, the people you can call each day, the people you can get in touch with every week, cannot be ten. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. they can only be a handful. Mm -hmm. For the average person, is one, two, three, at most four. Four is even too far. Mm -hmm. Those ones are already now on the outer. We are colleagues. We get along well, but we are not that personal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the people you are talking to each day will be one person, two, three people, mm -hmm. whom you can discuss life now that friend could also have another friend who they are close so it's like a group in the same direction yeah. but the people whom you you connected with through journey of life usually be few that is your family mm -hmm. stop feeling lonely stop expecting stop expecting the other the family that is blood to always you know uh, cheer you on as long as you have these guys who cheer you on the good thing with the family that is made by friendship is editable mm -hmm. if, if, we, if we fall out to the person simply release each other <laughs> there is no blood that, that forces us to stay together. If our paths of life diverge, we know. And I want you, Bramuel, to learn always to value these friends whom you don't need to, to see each other every day. Mm -hmm. But when you see each other, you still pick up from where you left. Yeah. It may be a, be a week or two weeks, but there's no blame game. Why don't you call me? Why don't you do this? No, no, no. You're just happy that you, are, you understand each other, that you have a life. You have, you have lives to build, you have jobs to build, you have families. But you, you value those times of friendship and you're just happy. There is no blame or shifting. You have a few friends like that and you need to value them a lot. Mm -hmm. When you finally call each other, there's you just joy. <laughs> there's no blame or guilt, guilt tripping. It's just happy that. And problem along your end, avoid asking people why they don't call you. Exactly. <laughs> don't ask them. <laughs> if they don't call you, they don't call you. They don't call Deal you. Deal with yes. the fact. <laughs> Deal with the fact. <laughs> don't start fighting with you.
<laughs> I'm dealing with a lot of people. People are calling me when they're asking obvious questions. Mm-hmm. This person is wanted now. They don't call anymore. Yeah, I have to call. What do I do? Ask him. What are you asking? Mm-hmm. You just deny reality. They are not calling. They are not they calling. Are not they are not interested. They are not interested. Deal with the fact. Mm-hmm. People are arguing with the reality. They think there's something they can do. How do, we, how do you deal with a person who is no, no longer seeing your value? You have to deal with them how? Go, then you can go to Loliondo. <laughs> if you think there's a way you can deal with this person now, then go on and deal. In this world, you can only acknowledge people's behavior yeah. and understand the message it's communicating to you. If they're telling you, I don't want you in my life, they're acting like you're not that important, accept it. Accept mm-hmm. the fact. And if you make an effort and another one to get in touch and it's still cold, we are not saying you let go every day, but sometimes you can check out on a person. But by the time, by the time you, 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 repeatedly the one calling, repeatedly the one texting, repeatedly, no, you've gone too far now. If I realize that Bramwell has not checked, we have not talked, I will call up myself to check, hey, what's up, man? Then you tell me something has been the matter. I've been immersed in exams, man. Our company has been having end year. We have been very tight, man. And all that. How be you? Ah, at least you're a busy man. No problem. If you're healthy, we'll catch up when you, when you have time. Healthy friendships behave like that. Many people who start by complaining when you don't call them, they usually use that to, introduce, to put you on the receiving end so they can get a favor. Mm-hmm. They are calling to borrow your money. And they know if they come on a neutral ground, you will not lend them. Yeah. But they want to put you on a, on a place where you owe them an apology. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you've not been calling them. And I keep reminding them, the people, the two people I must call in this world are my parents, my mother, and my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, there are so few. <laughs> That's true. I have a duty to call those people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're not in that category, <laughs> it is mutual. It's two-way. <laughs> The phone should be going to way. <laughs> because I know my genuine friends, we never blame each other. Mm-hmm. We are happy to catch up. Yeah. Are you healthy, man? How's life, man? I'm happy. And we are happy to pick up from there. Mm-hmm. There's no trade. Oh, you don't call. Oh, you don't this. Oh, you don't. No, I never signed the papers anywhere to be calling you. Yeah. <laughs> so, the last solution to family feud. So, I said the first one is just focus on the global, not local battles. And when you win the global, when you become successful and respected out there. At home, it will become clear who you are. They may not like you, but they will be forced to respect, mm-hmm. to acknowledge that you are respected out there. And when you drive home, they handle you with fear and a distance mm-hmm. <laughs> because your method has succeeded. And you followed a method they did not recommend, but yeah. it, worked. it worked. You did not marry when they wanted. You did not marry who they wanted. Mm-hmm. You did not get a child how they wanted. You didn't get a, the many children they wanted. You did not build what they wanted. You did not study what they wanted. But here you are flying high, looking happy, fulfilled, and the world is celebrating you. That force is respect. Yeah. Brahman, don't wait to be liked. Mm-hmm. Just win respect. Respect. Liking may come or may not come. Yeah. Just command respect. You are able to pay for something you want you to fundraise for. You pay at once so that you can move on to something else. <laughs> You know, families are very funny. Yeah. They can fight over very small money to connect power at home. <laughs> One of them could have easily paid, but they don't want to, to carry the burden alone. Yes. And you, you hate the back and forth. <laughs> and this is something, ah, you say, I've sorted it out. Let's go to another agenda. <laughs> <laughs> you silence them, but they label you badly. Oh, we have stinking, we have sonko here. Yeah. Oh, I never knew we have millionaires. They're still twisted, but you, you are tired of this headache off. This one has not said their contribution. The project delays. You wanted to put light for your mother, and she's growing old. And the thing is delaying because people are just back and forth trading blame. The second solution is to always redefine family and value those people who have been brought to your life who are not family and find solace in them. So that the others are there, but you don't lean on them. Remember that. You can find a person who has a cane, a walking stick, but they're not leaning on it. It's, it's for style. They're just carrying it. But there's another person who has a walking stick which they're leaning on. Mm-hmm. So that family that is, your relatives and then they become a walking stick that you don't use. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> You carry it to them as part of your identity, part of your history. <laughs> you don't discard it. But you never leave. You don't put your weight on it. Ah. Then you find another family which you put your weight on. When you're limping, they can hold you. Yeah. You know this one I can count on. And because you also, they lean on you. There's times you come through. You show up for them. Mm-hmm. However however successful or charismatic you are, there are things you can't do for yourself. You can't throw yourself a birthday party. For example, yeah. it will look weird. <laughs> how, will you how is it even a party? <laughs> I saw somebody saying, oh, I never knew you can actually buy a birthday cake any day, even if you don't have a birthday party and you eat. Nobody asks, actually. <laughs> there, is no, there is no surveillance system. There may be no monitoring, but it will lack any point. Exactly. It will have no sense. Yeah. Eating alone also sometimes looks weird. You look like you're very hungry. <laughs> if you see a guy in a restaurant, alone, munching food. You know that guy has been starving. <laughs> 
but when you are two it has more there's energy there's vibe there you know and and then uh, there's some things you can't do for yourself you need family but the family should be the family the people who want to see you progressing the people who want to see you moving the final solution is to be close to God. Yeah. God is the one family member. He calls himself your father. Mm -hmm. He's your family member, your dad, who will be doing this life and they want to come. Mm -hmm. There's a time David said, when my father and my mother forsake me, my God will receive me. Mm -hmm. You need to have that close, internal connection with your daddy. And Brahman, I want you to stop praying religiously. Mm -hmm. Stop structuring your prayers. Yeah. Please, me, when we are meeting with you, you don't, you don't cite recitations to me. Mm -hmm. There's a place for citations uh, for, uh, when we are many of us, yeah. for purposes of unison. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to your relationship with, with your God as your daddy, talk. Mm -hmm. Talk when you're in the car. Talk when you're driving. Just talk. He wants to hear that conversation, man. And he answers. Mm -hmm. He answers. It's a time we were attending a certain event and my girl had been praying for it that week. And by the time she prayed it, that time God said, I've already answered that, my daughter. Forget about that. Mm -hmm. She said, I had. Strong conviction. <laughs> I've had my daughter. Let's drop that. Let's go to another angel. Good answers. Have a relationship with God that is unshakable so that even in the in the sick bed, even in interviews, in those places that no human being can be with you, in those places that other people are caught up by their own lives, they can't be there for you. You have a daddy who says, God, I know. You're my daddy. You always got my back. Mm -hmm. And when you've fallen, when you've sinned, you just repent and he forgives you and he, he, he forgets it and throws it as far as the east is from the west. Mm -hmm. God used as far example to show you. We don't know where east is. We just know the direction. Yeah. There's no spot called east. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no spot called north. <laughs> it's a direction. Mm -hmm. Now he's asking, do you see how far the, the opposite? I mean, God will forget you have seen that much mm -hmm. until you as if it did not happen. I want you to have that daddy who I, I'm mentioning about sin because the enemy and the world makes you think you have to clean up for God to accept you. Yeah. But I said if you clean up, you'll have saved yourself. God will not be a savior <laughs> because you'll have saved yourself already. <laughs> God wants an attitude, an attitude, not, not perfectionism, humility and obedience and belief in him. Mm -hmm. Then he will deal, he will help you now to change. Brahman, we stop sinning when we become Christians. We don't stop sinning to become Christians. Yeah. It happens when you become. Mm -hmm. and after that, stop stop talking to God as if you are a stranger. I'm not worthy to make your presence. I'm just pleading for mercy. I'm sorry if you can actually have mercy on me. It's true there's a place for mercy. But once you become a child, a child of God, it's like when you are a friend to the child of the king. Mm -hmm. And the child of the president goes home with you mm -hmm. and tells daddy, hey daddy, this is my friend Brahma. You will not need now to introduce yourself and, and, and apologize mm -hmm. for being the king's present because you are riding on the friendship of a son. Jesus is the son of God. We are riding on the friendship with him to be comfortable in the presence of the king of God. And he has said, Father, these are my brothers. Uh, ah, have your friends ever had some food? Get some food, you guys. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> you have accessed the king because you are friends with the son. I want you to befriend the son so that you can access the king who also then become, we have been made, adopted as brothers. Now he becomes our father as well. I want you to develop that family, father-like connection with God and practice that. There's a book called Practicing the Presence of God mm -hmm. by Brother Lawrence. There's a guy who was a chef and he was saying how he practices the presence. How to practice the presence of God means to just cultivate that fellowship, communication, friendship. So build the daddy connection with God. Yes. Right. I like that, Benjamin. So powerful. Those three points are actually, actually, if we observe them, Benjamin, at the end of the day, we are going actually to get out of this that we are, we are actually talking about. Now, Benjamin, first things first, the very first point you've highlighted, I need to focus on the bigger battles. And mm -hmm. actually, most of us are stuck because of the smaller mm -hmm. families that we are fighting, the familial kind of battles. Yeah, right. And Benjamin, for me to do that, to focus, I need to know how to fed my familial kind of attitude so that I can actually maintain the focus mm. on the bigger battles. How do I fed and yet these are my own blood? How do I transit? I, and, and, and you know, that's, a, that's an important question because you grew up with them, you have a lot of memories and history, and when you don't update them about what you're doing, they look, they, 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 looks like you're ignoring them. Exactly. When they just show up with a car, and you do not tell them you're buying a car. You just show up with a woman you're trying to marry, and you, you do not ask them their opinion. Mm. <laughs> when they hear you on radio somewhere, and you do not tell them you're attending the interview. Yes. And that's, they always ask, how come you never told us? Mm -hmm. How come you never told us? How come? How come? How come? How come? They assume, uh, we are family, we are supposed to be updating each other every day. Yet, you know their attitude. So, Brahman, how to transit from uh, being 
opening your mouth about everything. <laughs> How to transit from mistaking your family for friends? How to transit from disclosing things then they are killed before they mature? How to transit from telling one family member and then you hear the stories with every family member? How to transit from bringing your your, your sibling to your house then she hears all your phone conversation yeah. she sees your life from outside and copy pastes it home mm-hmm. <laughs> and they show how Bra- our brahman is lost <laughs> <laughs> there's no problem accommodating uh, your relatives if you have organized your life to keep information private mm-hmm. but in your house you are free you're talking on phone you're doing this you're doing this they get to see your life what time you come home what time you leave what kind of like food you what facilities you have there mm-hmm. and if if they are supportive members that's okay some of them are friendly you may have a family member who is just friendly they look out for you they tell you about good things they don't gossip you they support you you'll always have one or two of that kind mm-hmm. and throughout life they're happy for you that, that kind of friendship is deep it's not about being sister or being brother mm-hmm. so how you transit is just grow up understand that these people you are connected by ancestry but you may not be connected by destiny mm-hmm. just understand that the right person to hang out with for Jonathan when 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 it became clear that Saul was deteriorating and it was David he was not supposed to be going back mm-hmm. and that going back costed him you can be good hearted and if you delay to transit to cross this bridge to lean on the walking stick that is David rather than the walking stick that is Saul mm-hmm. If you don't transit where to lay your weight, where to seek support from, you will lose big. Mm-hmm. Jonathan of these world good hearted men, they lost because they delayed too long to make that transition. Yes. I like that. And then when you're talking about the walking stick again, you'll realize again, I need to actually develop an intimate relationship with my God. But at the same time as the, the David the, the David you've used from the beginning, David used one stone. Mm-hmm. And most of us are actually holding on so many things and that is why we are hitting misses misses mm-hmm. misses because of the very many things we are we are holding family my mother my dad and some of us are also carrying the battles our parents have been fighting Benjamin mm-hmm. and that is why we are unable to move forward right. you see how can we also leave all these things we are holding on and retain the focus so that we can actually retain the momentum remember for me to reach my destiny momentum is required Momentum means movement, yeah. consistent movement without uh, interruptions. David had five stones, but he used one at a time. Yes. You may have many people you wanted to involve in your life, but check who is suitable now. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. And we said treat your family, your blood family as a walking stick you hardly use. You don't use. You carry it because maybe parts of the outfits where you come from is where it's straight fits there. Da, 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 da. But that's not where you place your weight on. Mm-hmm. Understand that you may have a mom, a dad whom you love, but their level. And Brahma, some of the family members are not malicious. It's mm-hmm. just that their level, <laughs> where they are, can't fit where I am. Mm-hmm. I can't seek this kind of advice. So time I kept telling people that I want you to love your parents, but acknowledge their limits. Yeah. Don't consult them on a level they have no clue about. Mm-hmm. They can give you the general wisdom of life that it's better to do ABCD before ABCD. Mm-hmm. It's really better to finish this. They may have general wisdom of life. But when it comes to technical advice on what where to invest now <laughs> technical advice on who to marry now mm-hmm. technical advice may, they may be clueless mm-hmm. just respect their limitations so instead of scattering yourself and consulting when you want to buy to invest and you asking five people you'll be confused yeah. find a person whom you think are like and they may be family a blood family or they may be family that are friendship we said that family from friendship that person whose advice re- resonates with what you are thinking now that person is enough and if you are married make that person your spouse and perhaps a best friend mm-hmm. and then the materials you study the shows you listen to they give you general wisdom which you can now customize for your situation personalize your journey you are acquiring wisdom then you are discussing with your partner or your best friend or somebody or mentor or it's not it should not be an opinion poll you are the one de- you are the one deciding you get input from one or two people and then you make the decision mm-hmm. yes and also the friendship we develop actually that turns into family that we actually uh, talked about benjamin it reaches a point whereby it expires some friendships have expired that benjamin but some people are not moving forward because they fear losing their friends because of the history they hold together yeah it's important to know when to retire friendship when a friendship is no longer smooth it's no longer flowing when it's causing you more stress than joy when it's costing you more 
uh, anxiety and you're having to explain or oh, there are long silences and disconnection and uh, there's no flow, uh, that's, that's the time to retire that friendship. You don't need to conduct a ceremony. We are meeting to party for the last time. So don't do that. <laughs> don't do a, a farewell party for friends. There is no need for that. <laughs> Let it die a natural death. Move on to other friendships. Mm-hmm. So that there is no enmity. Should you ever meet somewhere, you can still talk. But you just uh, hide the fact under the fact that our paths in life diverted, diverged, and we went different ways. But we appreciate the times we were together. And again, instead of complaining that the friendship has died, appreciate it existed, mm-hmm. that it built you when it did. Have that is to release what needs to go mm-hmm. and to welcome what needs to come. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. There you have it, my dear listener. Thank you so much, my brother.